We invite you to join us this half hour for Worship with Christ Lutheran Church in Bexley. The service this morning is led by Pastor Tim Eiseringhausen. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, your, your generosity and your love waters the world with goodness, and you cover all of creation with your abundance and your grace. Lord, we pray that you would awaken us in a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit, and with this food fill all the starving world. It's in and through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, that we pray now and always. Amen. Our first reading for this day comes from the book of Isaiah, the 55th chapter. O oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. 
See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Our second reading comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, the ninth chapter. Paul writes, I am speaking the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Our Gospel reading is taken from Matthew's 14th chapter, beginning with the 13th verse. Now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men besides the women and the children. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. For what are you hungry? For what are you hungry? There's there's an old joke. I'm sure you've heard this many, many times about the three mice who died and went to heaven. And when they got up to heaven, they talked to St. Peter, and they were all excited about being up there. And one of the mice said to, to St. Peter, Sir, we just have one request, and, and that is, this place is so big and our legs are so small. Is there any way that you can help us with our mobility up here in heaven so that we can get around? St. Peter said, You know, I can take care of that. So a little while later, he came back with rollerblades for all three mice. Rollerblades, roller skates. The mice were excited, put them on, and off they went all over the place. Well, you probably know where this is going. A cat came to heaven at Pearly Gates not long after a cat died, and the cat was coming into heaven. And and uh, after the cat had been up there for a little while, St. Peter asked, well, how do you like it up here? And the cat said, it is great, absolutely wonderful. I never thought that I'd get up here and have meals on wheels. For what do we hunger? You know, when we think of hunger, we often think of, of, of physical food, right? Uh, maybe a stack of pancakes, bacon and eggs since it's the morning. For some, tragically, physical hunger, hunger is a constant. They don't have enough food, and so it's God working through us to make sure that those folks have enough to eat. But hunger includes other things, too. A hunger for peace, for well-being, for security for hope, a hunger for meaning and and purpose and belonging. For what are you hungry? The list is long, isn't it? It's long. Well, this morning we are witnesses to Jesus' feeding of the 5,000. And and in this text, there's a whole lot to talk about. This story is the only miracle to be recorded in all four Gospels. So the writers must have thought it really very, very important. And in fact, when we talk about the numbers here, 5,000, notice that Matthew says 5,000 men besides women and children. So if you throw in the women and children, you're, we're talking probably between ten and 15,000 people in this crowd. And so with that context, we, we could discuss if we wanted to miracles in general. We could talk about why such crowds would want to traipse around the country after Jesus. We could talk about Jesus' compassion, you know, his willing to give up his much-needed quiet time after the murder of his cousin John. We could talk about our role in God's work, which is very important. Jesus gave the food to the disciples, who then gave it to the crowd. Or we could simply focus on the generosity and unselfishness of that one little boy whom we read in John's telling of the story, who brought the loaves and fish to the disciples in the first place. So there are a ton of sermons here. There are any number of sermons here. But what I would like to focus on this morning is is the menu, really, and precisely how little there was. Five loaves and two fish. Not enough. Not for hungry people. Listen again to what the disciples said. Lord, it is late. Send the crowds away to get some supper. And Jesus says, nah, they can stay. No need for them to go. You feed them. Can you imagine being one of the disciples? What, Lord, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And that's not enough for anything. Lord, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. Nothing here but five loaves and two fish. You know, that's the response of people throughout the ages when they feel overwhelmed by the world around them. It's a response of a parent worried about their child. So much peer pressure in the world today, so many issues for our young people, so many influences, so many temptations to face. And so parents say, what do we do? What do we do to protect our child? We, We have here only five loaves and two fishes. It's a small business owner in the face of a changing economy. How can we compete with a big chain store that just opened? One that advertises 20,000 items under one roof. We don't have 20,000 of anything. 
We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. Maybe an employee has a boss whose life makes it makes everybody's lives miserable and never has a good word for anyone. And maybe there's even things going around in the office, going on in the office that that uh, uh, ought not to be. You know, business eth- ethics. You blow the whistle. Feel free if you don't want the job anymore. Downsized? Does that strike a familiar note? Good jobs are scarce out there. A worker hungry for the chance to do the right thing might say, you know, there's nothing here but five loaves and two fish. Hmm. Lord, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish, and maybe not even that. Psalm 42, verse 3, the psalmist says this, My tears have been my food day and night. That might be the response of any of us when life seems overwhelming and we just know our resources are not enough to deal with it. We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. What are we supposed to do? And certainly that was the response of the disciples when these 10, 15,000 folks followed Jesus into the wilderness. They had come to listen to Christ's words, to feel his healing touch, to be near something, someone special. And now... The hour has grown late. It's time for supper, and they're hungry. There's no way to buy food for so large a crowd. It would take 200 denarii to have done so, and that was the equivalent of eight months' pay. Eight months' pay for that. At any rate, it was a bundle, surely more cash than the disciples had ever had on them at one time. Anyway, Kroger's and the Kroger's and Giant Eagle were closed. McDonald's wasn't open 24-7 then. So Jesus said to the 12, you give them something to eat. Jesus always seems to be asking more of us than we have to give. As spouses and parents and students and workers and on and on, yeah, he calls us to love even when loving is a really hard thing to do. To forgive even when we've been wronged to stand fast and firm in in our faith and values, even when it means standing alone. And those things are not easy to do. I've shared with you before that that I always said to my son, Mike, I, I said, you know, remember, what would Jesus do, Mike, when he went out into the world? And finally, one time he said, yeah, I know, Dad, but I'm not Jesus. I'm not Jesus. We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. Well, fortunately for the twelve and for us, the story doesn't end with Jesus asking the seemingly impossible the disciples and then wandering off in the desert, leaving them stranded. You guys take care. Good luck feeding all these people. I'll see you in a couple of days. He doesn't say that. He says, you give them something to eat. The disciples say, how? We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And then Jesus says softly, bring them here to me. And he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate, all were filled, that is, satisfied, and there were twelve baskets of food left over. So there's good news for for all of us moms and dads who find ourselves wondering, do I have what it takes to handle these kids today? The answer is no, we don't have what it takes. Do we have what it takes to be to to do what needs to be done? Oftentimes no. At best in the face of overwhelming odds, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. But we have a Lord who whispers, "Bring them to me. Bring them to me. Your skills, your weaknesses, your strengths, your fears. Bring them to me and I will make you adequate for the task at hand." I can't help but remember when Paul prayed for the thorn in his flesh to be removed and God's response to him was, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. So I think when life gets the best of us, perhaps it's often because we focus too much on how little we can do and too little on how much Christ can do. When Sharon, my wife, and I were first married, and even though we'd known each other our whole lives, she still had this mistaken notion that I could fix things, that I could fix things. 
You know, our Danielle, our oldest daughter, her first crib was a total disaster. In fact, I assembled the crib with much difficulty uh, for some reason in the hallway outside her bedroom and then put it all together and, dis- and discovered I couldn't get it through the door. So I had to take it all apart and then put it back together again. And I had I don't know how many leftover pieces. You know, she shook her head over that. And the closest my wife and I ever came to getting a divorce was when we were putting up our first swing set for the kids. That was that was a disaster. All this, in spite of the fact, 35 years of living under the same roof with me has taught her incontrovertibly that I am the world's least handy man. But she still has faith. She still has faith. The other, the other day, she went with our grandkids to the fair. It was all day at the fair. She came home. She was hot. She was tired. She was grumpy because the kids had been less than stellar. And our air conditioning went out. And it was muggy. She was not in a good mood. She stomped up the steps. And I said, let me see what I can do. And I heard from her, a, huh. Well, I went to the thermostat, tried new batteries, didn't work. And then I just kind of shook the thermostat on the wall a little bit. And ding. The air conditioner went on. She said, what did you do? And I went over to the drawer in the kitchen where we have some tools, and I rattled around in there, and I said, oh, I fixed it. I put it all back together again. And she says, you're my hero. We have air conditioning again. I said, that's right. And as she obviously she'll hear this today, so she'll, she'll know what the truth is. But the point is that there's an uncomfortable lot I cannot do, right? I cannot heal broken hearts. I cannot open closed minds or change unfair systems or right the wrongs or love the unlovely all by myself either. Can you? None of us can. Instead, my response is often the same as the disciples. What am I supposed to do, Lord? I have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. Someone wrote a few years back, A basketball in my hands is worth about $19. A basketball in Michael Jordan's hands is worth about $33 million. Depends on whose hands it's in. A baseball in my hands is worth about $6. A baseball in Mark McGuire's hands is worth $19 million. It depends on whose hands it's in. Two fish and five loaves of bread in my hand is a couple of Happy Meals. Two fish and five loaves in God's hands will feed thousands. It depends on whose hands it's in. And the truth is, Jesus' hands transformed everything and everyone he ever touched and touches. The blind received their sight, the lame walked, the lepers were cleansed, the dead were raised. Your sins and mine were and are forgiven. Our slates have been wiped clean. And what I have and what you have, what the disciples and the crowd of 10 to 15,000 plus had, what anyone hungry and thirsty for help has is the standing invitation to call on someone who knows what to do. When life seems too big and I feel too small, someone is close who can do what I cannot do. Someone can right the wrongs, heal the hurts, love the unlovely, and scale the mountains. Someone who can take my paltry little handful of loaves and fishes and turn them into a feast. However little I may possess in terms of talent or resources, Jesus whispers, bring them to me. And with him, my little, your little, becomes a lot with leftovers to spare. Indeed, God's grace is more than sufficient for you and for me. Thanks be to God in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now, Almighty God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen. This worship service is prepared as a gift from the members of Christ Lutheran Church in Bexley. We would like to greet you in person at worship. The worship schedule is 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. traditional worship with a contemporary service at 915. We invite you to join us in person at Christ Lutheran Church at 2314 East Main Street in Bexley or again next Sunday morning at 8 a.m. here on WMNI. God's peace and blessings be with you this coming week and always.